sponsored by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Nigeria. Small businesses are typically the engine of growth of an economy. Studies have shown that small and medium-sized enterprises account for as much as 55% of GDP and over 65% of employment in high-income countries. In medium-income countries, the numbers rise to about 70% of GDP and about 95% of total employment. However, recent studies on the Nigerian economy indicate that SMEs account for less than 55% of total economic output. This relatively low figure indicates the growth potential of small businesses in Nigeria and the need to support their growth. Nigerians are natural entrepreneurs, so we will have micro-enterprise, small and medium-scale enterprise created on a daily basis in Nigeria. I think what the issues are is that we're able to sustain them and grow them such that they become large, impactful businesses uh, in our economy. And I think the way that the country is looking at it today is the right way forward. It's like an ecosystem. The government has made job creation one of its important goals. And everybody knows everywhere in the world what creates jobs is small and medium scale enterprise. It's the source of innovation. It's the source of new products. All over the world, um, small and medium scale enterprises are considered the engine of growth for any economy. And that is where you have the largest uh, number of people that are employed, uh, that are kept. So it's actually very critical to uh, the economy. Uh, in most places on average, they contribute about 65% of the GDP. Though unfortunately in this parts of the world, like in Nigeria, they contribute just about 45%. So there's a lot of room for growth. And if any country wants to transform, um, it's those small businesses that will actually transform them. If you look at um, you know, the Asian countries, Malaysia, the Asian Tigers, the Singapore, you also observe that most of how their economy, the economic revolution that took place, we are actually, you know, this segment of the industry that we are talking about, the micro, small, and medium enterprises. They have been the engine of growth. They have supported that. In Japan, you will get that. Even in U.S., you also see clearly that the Ford Motors, the General Motors, even the Apple computer, if you take it down to other segment of the economy, you will see clearly that the area we call the, you know, the telecom areas, which is of course growing, you will be able to see that they are also supposed to be providing the equipments that will support this segment of the industry. The power holdings, if you drill it down, you also discover that these are the people that will also be involved in providing support in the areas of power generation. Emmanuel Ijewere is an example of a Nigerian that reflects the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the creation of new businesses. After a successful career as a chartered accountant, he set up Best Foods in 2003. He tells us that in 10 years, he has weathered the storm of a difficult business environment to turn a business idea into an agro-based company with annual revenues in excess of one billion naira. Well, uh, best food say as an accident. Um, <clears throat> um, I've been, I'm a chartered accountant by profession, but I've been in the practice for over 35 years. And I was just thinking of what I'll be doing next. Because I told my partners that I was moving out into something new, but I was not sure what I was going into. Then by accident, I just stumbled into an occasion when I saw a lady the lady, a professional corporate lady, in the evening after 6 o'clock, buying meat from hawkers on my chest, fresh meat, actually. I was, uh, I was really depressed about it. And then I asked myself the question, uh, did she have a choice? And uh, the answer to that was that she didn't have a choice because we did not have avenues where decent meat could be sold, I mean processed, slaughtered, processed, and sold. And I said, I now found where to go. We have a place like Pack and Shop, ShopRite, Ibano. Um, for all the meat, we, in fact, slaughter for a company called um, uh, Master Meat, who are the main contractor or franchisees of uh, ShopRite for meat all over the world. But we now slaughter for them, and we also do some processing. But Best Foods growth story is not what you would typically associate with SMEs in Nigeria. Indeed, beyond access to capital, the relatively low impact of small businesses in the economy can be linked to a lack of skill and training. Most of the time, ownership 
is not separated from business. And that creates a, 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 a model for people uh, who would want to relate with SMEs. It makes them quite risky and it makes them not bankable. So obviously, if an SME wants to approach uh, the capital markets either for debt or equity, uh, it has uh, to deal with these constraints. It has to basically reconfigure the way it works. It needs to translate from just being a, from just being a business into an institution with uh, proper corporate governance structures, a strategic plan showing how it makes money and how it intends to do so for the next five years. Remember that when you go to the capital markets, you're looking for long-term capital. And they need to also have the right kind of processes, the right kind of people, basically uh, a, a lot of structure that gives comfort to those uh, that they will approach for, fundi for funding. So there's very poor bookkeeping or accounting that goes on. Typically, when a bank wants to lend to any business, it has to look at their books to check whether you're actually credit worthy or bankable or whether your cash flows can support um, the money they're going to lend to you. So if there's no record of your cash flows, then it becomes very difficult for any bank to lend to you. Or even if they wanted to lend to you, how much they're going to lend to you. Or even if they knew how much to lend to you, how long they're going to give you the money. Because all these are uh, factors of your cash flow and the structure of that cash flow. Um, another one is the governance issues. And uh, around this broad subject of governance is are areas like risk factors, the key man risk. You find that most of these small businesses are also not very structured. So one man is the managing director, the same man, the head of HR, the same man, the accountant, the same man, the marketing officer. So you have that key man risk in there. And most times, the mortality rate of these businesses are very high. So if you look, at the, look for the cheap promoter, you can't find him, the business dies. So because of that key man risk that is usually inherent in these small businesses, most banks shy away from lending to them. Now, outside of that, you look at the environment too. You have to, apart from the relationship with financial institutions, you look at the core business that they do and the input, factor inputs into their businesses. So if you look at something like power, most of these small businesses require energy uh, to carry out the operations. And of course, you know, Nigeria has serious issues around uh, power uh, and we've been struggling with 4,000, 4,300 megawatts of electricity in a population of 169, there are about a million people. With population of MSMEs in Nigeria about 17.281 million, even if they were households, you find that 4,000 megawatts cannot power them. So there are serious issues around power and that has dragged down the capacity of these MSMEs. My biggest problem is getting the infrastructure and the the personnel. It's a new industry. We don't have people who are trained in that field. Even let's take the farm. A lot of young men go in and read agriculture, but take them to the farm. When the sun hits them, after a week, they'll be looking for a job, a white collar job. They've not been able to build a lot of um, management expertise. You see the person as uh, okay can sons. All, you know, building up enterprise and every other thing, you know, resource around him. You don't see debt, you don't see bread, you don't see them having pool of experienced people. Financing is a problem because our financial institutions and those in, in agribusiness don't understand each other. We speak two different languages. Uh, Short-term funds cannot work. High interest rate funds, expensive funds cannot work because Food is such that you must grow it as efficiently as possible, and the margin must be small but consistent. By their very nature, most of them are unstructured. At best, they're semi-structured. And um, to a very large degree, you do not find things like um, corporate governance uh, structures and processes. You do not find professional management. Neither do you even find any attempt to um, organize the business deliberately to provide it with uh, what you call strategic management. Most businesses uh, that are SMEs uh, in a recent baseline study that was done uh, don't even have business plans. Then of course they have the usual problems with having the kind of people that they need to help them manage the business. Over the last two decades, Nigerian authorities have implemented a variety of programs to support the growth of SMEs. Central Bank established the SMAE, the Small, Medium, Enterprise Equity Investment Fund, where banks are expected to set aside 10% of their profit after tax for this segment of the industry, and also to you know, involve in equity participation. 
they also then further extended that to loan funding so that they'll be able to get that. Of course, that's meant to provide also uh, you know, advisory services by entering into equity participation. That's very important. The other you know, important aspect is the Bank of Industry Intervention Fund, which has also been a platform for them to assess fund at a very, you know, that are of long-term nature and are also of single digit because interest rate is also very important. But more recently, the growth of small businesses has become an important element of the economic transformation agenda of President Goodluck Jonathan. Since uh, 2011, uh, we've had a business planning competition to encourage those who are business people to get mentorship from successful business people and get financing. That is run by the federal government, led by the coordinating minister uh, of the economy called the UIN program. The uh, Minister of Information and Communications Technology in December launched a $15 million fund and the government put in $3.6 million of their own money to support innovation and support small and medium scale enterprises amongst youth in information and communications technology. The Minister of Agriculture has talked about setting up a seed venture capital fund and, has a, and, and, and says that $3 million has already been approved uh, for this fund. The, the work that's being done on staple crop processing zones uh, is one where you will have large companies, small uh, and medium scale enterprise supporting those companies uh, and therefore you will have a, a, an economic corridor that supports small and medium scale uh, enterprise and growing. There are many other initiatives. The Minister of Trade and Investment uh, is looking to leverage expertise worldwide on venture capital so that we can systema systematically grow the venture capital business. And we at SEC therefore feel that as we think about building companies that ultimately will be listed on the Nigerian capital markets, that we must participate in these initiatives that groom those companies because we want those companies to be well prepared before they're listed uh, on the exchange. Um, last year, as you know, we also approved the new listing requirements, which are more supportive today of small and medium scale enterprises than, than the country has ever had. The stock exchange, of course, will launch the alternative uh, securities market, which will bring together the second tier, the third tier, and the fourth tier markets into one market. Uh, they're supporting it with nominated advisors, as you find in the UK, uh, um, in, in, in South Africa. And what we feel is that it means that companies can meet the listing requirements, but they can also meet the post-listing requirements. Financial institutions in Nigeria have also embraced a new approach to driving the growth of small businesses. And Diamond Bank, in partnership with International Finance Corporation, IFC, have been doing a lot in that area of education. We need to educate these people. In-house, what we're also doing in terms of enlightenment and education for these people is we have set up a help desk, an advisory help desk, that take them through these governance issues. And most of the seminars we organize or business clinics we organize that tend to handle these issues, what we do to incentivize them is to say, well, if you've been through our program, like a seminar that deals on governance, that deals on structure, that deals on marketing, well, you know what others do not know, and that means that we are risk is now lower. So if, on average, the typical MSME uh, business will borrow at say 21% per annum. If you'd have gone through this de risking process, we can lend to you at 2% below that rate. So, because the risk is lower, having gone through that education. So, we use that in to incentivize them to come for these seminars and business clinics and all that. So, there has to be a lot of education in that, uh, that sector. So, what Fidelity has done is to create what we call Fidelity SME Advisory services, which we call Fidelity SME Clinic, is meant to build capacity, is meant to attend to their needs, is meant to ask them about, even before they set up those enterprises, the how, why, addressing those issues. Help them, you know, to understand the implication of even entering in those areas. Even the funding that they want to start with, is it sufficient for them to go to into their places? What are the perennial risks involved in taking all of this? We have what we call the Enterprise Development Center. And at this Enterprise Development Center, we avail SMEs the opportunity of business advisory services. 
in the various functional areas. Access to capital remains a common challenge limiting the growth of many SMEs in Nigeria. After the break, we delve into ongoing initiatives designed to promote the capital market as a source of long-term financing for growth businesses.